Lucy, this was a huge day for Governor McDonald. You could tell he was relieved about the pointed questions the justices asked of the prosecution's case against him. These eight foot waves being pushed by those constant northeast winds really causing a lot of problems and beach erosion, which is what Kitty Hawk is known for. Here's a good example of it. You can see half the staircase has been splintered from this rough surf. It's the height of high tide right now. It's the worst that it's going to get here in Pocosin. We're on Messick Road heading toward Messick Point. You can see the water has completely overtaken the roadway here. Isdell's only way out was this door, which was stuck shut until he kicked it open and crawled to safety. And he was standing up when all of a sudden two bullets burst through this window, one of the bullets tearing through his chest. Meantime, the flames so fierce they singed the leaves on the tree overhead, even melting the mailbox out front. Five people overdosed on those drugs. What do you think of that? If you're on leave from the bank, why not be on leave from the mayor's office? He saw another man just drenched in blood. Police right now desperately trying to find witnesses to help them piece together what happened here and get this attacker off the streets. Portsmouth Mayor Keddy Wright left the magistrate silent and smiling. Was he playing petty politics? Was this all political? After Sheriff Bill Watson had him arrested for allegedly trying to escape from police during a pursuit. Do you think he singled you out? Do you think he singled you out? The sheriff and the mayor have a fierce political rivalry. And only 13 News Now was there when the tension escalated into a bizarre scene at City Hall. Yeah, once he starts it up, he's mine. The sheriff says he came to City Council upset that the mayor decided to find Councilman Bill Moody for revealing what council planned to discuss during a closed door session. When I saw the mayor's car with a stick, expired sticker, I thought, there is a God in heaven. It just doesn't get any better than that, you know? So the sheriff threatened the mayor with the citation of his own. Hold it right there. I was going to give him a warning. Hold it right there. Park the car and go get a sticker on it. He didn't stop him. I thought, game on, pal. What happened next can only be described as just plain weird. The sheriff chased after the mayor in a slow pursuit throughout downtown. What are you doing? I need to see driver's license registration, please. I wait. He said me to get away from him. Really? He's going to jail. After the mayor failed to stop twice, the sheriff called in police as backup. Yeah, I had to get five police officers to stop the mayor. He refused to stop. And officers closed in on the mayor a half a mile away on Effingham Street. It all ended with the sheriff slapping the mayor with a ticket. You pulled off and left me. I said stop. Watson says he waited until today for things to cool down before charging the mayor with a felony. But he still says politics had nothing to do with it. Do you think, though, that chasing after him was vindictive? Was it petty? No, it's, it's, he has no respect for law enforcement at all. It fell into place. It was fantastic. And the sheriff says that he charged the mayor with a felony because he says the mayor almost hit a car while driving away. Of course, we've been reaching out to the mayor. We have not heard back. We did notice, though, he had an updated inspection sticker on his Mercedes when he left the magistrate's office. He's due in court later this month. Reporting live in Portsmouth, Eric Kane, 13 News Now. And I, I promised my kids there will always be something there for your dad. Rebecca Jones says she wouldn't know how to tell her kids that their father's memorial is missing. No, I don't explain it to them. I don't, know, I don't even know what to say. Well, the people your dad saved, they want, they want it down because it's an eyesore. Holding on to her mom, Rebecca broke down at the corner of Wellington Road and Stanley Street this morning. Yesterday, the Neighborhood Civic League took down the tribute for fallen Norfolk police officer Brian Jones. We come down here all the time. We drive, I mean, you drive by it just to go to Walmart and the kids always look over and there's my daddy's memorial. The collection of flowers and flags had been there since the summer of 2014 when Jones died at the hands of a gunman opening fire into the neighborhood. The president of the Cottage Park Civic League, Kitty Ledsom, posted on Facebook yesterday, it is time to move forward, just like Officer Jones's widow. Without telling Rebecca, the Civic League moved the memorial to Jones's final resting place. They, they literally took it and dumped it on his grave. The Civic League president messaged Rebecca on Facebook, asking her to not put up another memorial. But this morning, Rebecca did anyway. And afterwards, several officers escorted the widow to Ledsom's home to work it out. But she left in Tears. She says that she said I disrespected her community. We tried speaking with Letsom, but only her husband came to the door. Uh, obviously, uh, we apologize for any harm that we did. Uh, there was no malice of intent. Um, 
turned out not to be a good idea. Rebecca says she's going to a Civic League meeting tonight to explain the significance of keeping a lasting memorial in the neighborhood where her husband died trying to help. Something, even if it's just the wreath, there has to be something there, something forever. Well, after a visit from police, Rebecca and us, the news media, the Civic League says this memorial can now stay, but Rebecca is not convinced. She still plans on going to that Civic League meeting tonight to tell neighbors what this memorial means for her and her kids. Reporting live in Norfolk, Eric Kane, 13 News Now. Eric Kane is live there right now. And Eric, you've seen some pretty big waves out there. Yeah, and I've been nailed by a few of them, David. We're standing right here in Kitty Hawk on the beach. It doesn't look like much of a beach. Look at the ocean. You can see it's already very high, and it's not even high tide right now. These eight-foot waves being pushed by these northeast winds are setting the stage for some possible beach erosion and tidal flooding. Tidal surges, heavy winds, and steady rainfall continue to hammer the Outer Banks. Realtor Therese Moorfield spent the day battling Mother Nature while securing beachfront properties in Dare County. It was exhausting, but that's what we have to do. With Hurricane Joaquin heading out to sea, county officials decided not to evacuate and are now preparing for the risk of major flooding. We're worried about overwash as well as erosion. Kitty Hawk Mayor Gary Perry says crews have installed emergency water pumps as conditions here are expected to worsen. We live in a bowl here on the ocean front, so there's no place for that water to go. The strong surf during high tides slammed into the sandbags, propping up this stretch of NC-12. I'm a little concerned with the, uh, the debris in the water that it doesn't puncture the sandbags, you know, and then starts leaking out. Many living in this coastal community are looking for a break and looking to hold on to the beach that's slowly slipping away. It's really difficult to watch, you know, I mean, you, I've grown up here and you see it and it changes, you know, houses get damaged, I mean, houses even fall in. And officials are asking thrill seekers to stay out of the water. The risk of rip currents is very, very high, and it's only supposed to get worse as the weekend moves on.